Hi, Todd of Todd Stuff here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a Kranequin. So this is a late 15th century Kranequin. They were invented sometime in the second half of the, uh, of the 15th century in a slightly simpler form than this. They then developed almost a second iteration into this one. And then by the 16th century they became incredibly ornate, like real status symbols, almost pieces of jewellery in their own right. Um, but at this point, it's merely an expensive object, and they haven't really got around to decorating it yet. It's all a bit novel. Now, it is an incredibly powerful compound gearbox. So basically, one full turn of that oh, makes, what's that, less than a centimetre, maybe eight millimetres, um, uh, half, uh, three-eighths of an inch uh, of travel on the rack. So you're getting a fantastic gear ratio on this. It means you can span some very powerful boats. Now I'm just winding this back because I'm going to show you how it's used on a, a crossbow now. So basically, you crank the handle around until you've got it to the fully open position. So it does make it rather slow to use, it must be said. Now, I'll just get this bow here, which is a Kranequin bow, very suitable for it. Nice Central European German style. Now you just hook it on, and you crank it around. Now, I'm now beginning to span the bow. So you can see from this that I'm drawing the bow back. And to give you an idea, this is about a 600 pound. So you notice here, I let go of that, and actually it spun back a little bit, but generally it self-locks, right? Now there's a really good reason for that. And that's if we span the bow, turn the bow over, there's a little hole here, and this particular trigger system requires you to push a pin in to set the trigger. Now of course what that means is that you can't hold the Kranequin while you're doing all of this. So it's fully spanned and you have to be able to let go. And what it won't do is unwind itself. So again, I'll just show you. So basically the system self locks. So yeah, you know, it works really well. Now if I wind that down and take it off, I'll show you the insides and why it does the self locking. Now, at later times, they'd screw uh, Kranequins together. Sometimes in this period they would, generally they wouldn't actually, they'd just pop them together with pins. That's how this one's been done. So you just pop the pins out, it's obviously the main handle, let's get rid of the belt hook. Now, I make no bones about it, these things are heavy. So the belt hook really is just to suspend it off your horse harness or something, it's not something that you would really want to hang on your own belt. I'm just going to take the top strap off. Now these last two pins, generally you'd knock out with a hammer, but I don't really want to mark the steel, so I'm just popping them out with a pair of pliers. Okay. So we have the top cap. Now what I try and do when I make stuff like this, is I know that people want to be able to look at it and take it apart and show people and talk it through, you know, because that's, that's what we love about history, is the weirdness of it. And so I try to make my stuff as correct inside as outside. Now, Part of that you'll see here, got the little pinion bit here, uh, gear for the crank handle. The main gear and the pinion for that, a uh, couple of washers, and then the rack itself. So again, the, the main casing here, I've tried to rivet everything that I can, what's not riveted is brazed. Um, so you know, that's, that's how I try and make the stuff, so that it looks good. Now what you will really notice, especially if you're an engineer or know anything about gearing, is that I've got a three tooth pinion gear here and this one is a four tooth pinion. This is how they did them. Now they're not modern gear uh, teeth profiles which are very particular shapes. These are actually round so they're, they're part of the circle. Um, but they, they mesh well enough and that's fine. But then if we look at this one particularly which is the three tooth onto the rack here it rolls along but it tends to bind and even just rolling it by hand now it, it, it binds and you have to sort of like like that one. You have to pop it through to the next point. Now, what that does is it means that the way it's set up, if I crank the handle, it will drive the system. But if I try to put the force down the rack and pull the two parts apart, the system jams. I have to put my force into the handle to do it. It doesn't need much force to, to do it, but basically, if I try and pull that out, i.e. I have let go of the handle, then the, the whole system will jam. And so what it won't do is just unwind itself, which is exactly, of course, what you don't want when you're spanning a bow, which is what I showed you there earlier on. So anyway, so we'll just pop it back together again now, and I'll talk you through it as we go. So the first thing you do is pop the rack in, put the hook on it, 
and again, you just pin it together. Now because the item is handmade, you do want to have some care about which pin goes where, because it does matter. So the main gear now, I'll just put the correct space of washer on the bottom, just turning it upside down so the washer doesn't drop. So, there we go, we're in position. Washer onto the little crank pinion, again pop it upside down. And now you can see how the mechanism works. So it's all functioning very well now. Just put the top plate on. And then the top strap. That's great. Now again, like I said, paying attention to where the pins go. Now these ones, you do want to pop them in so they jam, because otherwise you'll end up losing them, and that of course is a pain in the butt. Pop them in. And then likewise, that is a correct position, that's always a pain in the ass with handmade objects. And then we're in. And there we go. So, crown queen back and functional. So, you know, it's an easy thing to strip down, which does make it great for the sort of show and tell type thing, if that's your thing. Um, other than that, it's fully functional, so it's also great to use. Thank you very much.